Welcome to Tales from Wales and the Great Beyond. Today is a Halloween special mini episode. Today we travel to the Great Beyond part of Tales from Wales and the Great Beyond and head to the border between England and Wales. Specifically, we are exploring an overview of the history and a series of dark tales from the Norman city of Ludlow. The town of Ludlow was a planned one and it consisted of a castle, a market square and a fortified wall surrounding the town. Its written history begins around 1086 when the castle started to be developed. This would mean that it was the Normans who planned the town. The idea was that Ludlow would serve as a market town and would attract people from all around to its market town square, businesses and its church. As previously mentioned, Ludlow Castle's development started around 1086. Ludlow Castle was always a stone-built castle as it was part of the town planning. This would be considered unusual for its time as castles around this period were often wooden at first and then later on modified to stone. The earliest remaining parts of the castle were built by Roger and Hugh de Lacey. Walter de Lacey, the son of Hugh, who was a trusted member of the William Fitzosborne household. He arrived in England in 1066 as part of the army who successfully conquered England. Up until the 13th century, the de Lacey family retained lordship over the castle. The castle stands on high ground overlooking the River Teme and the River Corf. During Tudor times, Arthur Tudor, who was the Prince of Wales, and more famously, the brother of Henry VIII, stayed at Ludlow Castle for his honeymoon with his new wife, Catherine of Aragon. As we well know, Catherine of Aragon later became Henry VIII's first of six wives. Further along the timeline, in the 18th century, Ludlow became a fashionable market town, attracting elegant Georgian houses to be built and giving the town a fashionable and social status. From here into the 19th century, many fashion businesses grew in Ludlow. The town became particularly well known for its glove making industry as well as other forms of textile manufacturing. By 1853, Ludlow Railway Station was also constructed, which connected Ludlow to the Shrewsbury and Hereford Line. This made it an easy and attractive location to visit, especially for its market. The bridge we see today is known as Dinham Bridge, and it has been reconstructed over the centuries, but the one we see today was built in 1823. The bridge was built by a Shropshire surveyor called Thomas Telford. He originally named the bridge the New Bridge. The bridge designer, however, was John Straffan. It is a beautiful stone bridge that stretches across the River Teme and is located just outside the town's gate. It was an excellent position for trade and for transporting building materials to and from Ludlow. The River Teme that runs through Ludlow begins in mid Wales and eventually it joins the River Severn which leads to the Bristol Channel. Just like many old towns and cities around the world, Ludlow also has its own fair share of ghostly goings on. According to local legend, a lady named Marion was in love with a knight who was called Arnold. This knight was an enemy of the lord of the castle. One night, she lowered a rope to allow the knight to climb up and into the castle through the Pendevin Tower. However, this knight was not alone. Instead, he had tricked Marion and had brought along a small army of a hundred men who invaded the castle. In response to the betrayal of her town and to herself, Marion cut the knight's throat with his own sword. Unable to live with the guilt and shame, 
Sadly, Marian threw herself from the tower onto the rocks below. Over the decades at Ludlow Castle, a myth has sprung up that says that if you visit the castle tower on a quiet evening at dusk, her ghost will appear. However, visit her on the anniversary of her death, you may also witness her screaming. Speaking of betrayal, it is also reported that another ghost haunts Ludlow Castle. The castle is also linked to a 16th century soldier who unsuccessfully tried to gain access to the castle. According to those who work at the castle and those who visit, there is an entity who apparently is a herd heavily breathing. It is said that this heavy breathing is coming from that soldier who tried to betray the castle. In 1553, at the Globe Inn in the centre of Ludlow, a terrible murder took place. According to local reports, Edward Dobson was a serviceman for Richard, the Duke of York. One fateful night at the Globe Inn, Edward Dobson got into a pub brawl. The fight, sadly, did not end well for Edward Dobson and he tragically lost his life. It is said that it is the ghost of Edward Dobson that can be seen around Market Street and other old parts of the town. And that's it for today's episode. A brief dive into the history of Ludlow and the local legends surrounding this beautiful town. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch another video from Tales from Wales and the Great Beyond.